We've been knee deep in testing this year's 2021 models. And among those was this one here, the LG C1 OLED. For all you movie buffs, gamers, or if you're simply just a casual TV watcher, we're here today to help you get the most out of your new TV. No need to be intimidated by the in-depth picture settings. We'll help guide you in finding the best picture settings for your needs. We'll be discussing our suggested picture settings for the 55 inch model we tested right here. We'll go over and explain the different features found deeper in the TV's menu and ultimately help take out the guessing work for all of you. Hey there, I'm Adam, a tester here at ratings.com where we help you find the best products for your needs. Today we'll be focusing on picture settings. We'll explain the different features found deeper in the TV's menu. We'll start off with our recommended settings for movies, then move on to features that can help smooth out content when watching sports. After that, we'll check out some settings for TV viewing and show you how to get that soap opera effect for those who like it. And finally, we'll go over our recommended settings for you gamers out there, whether it be for console gaming or to use it as a PC monitor. This video is meant to be a guide, and note that what we discuss here is not an end-all, be-all. These are simply our recommendations, and at the end of the day, this is your TV, so make it your own. In fact, almost all settings we recommend tend to have similar parameters of that within the movie section of this video. We really do recommend that you watch that part of the base settings before moving along. After, you can jump to the subject that speaks to your needs, sports, TV, gaming, and monitor use, and tweak things to your liking. We're simply here to give you our suggestions based on our findings by using specialized equipment and intensive testing. All right, let's help you guys become masters at customizing your TV. Let's take a quick look at the C1's interface. This year, we're looking at the newly redesigned WebOS 6.0 interface. We now get a nice little smart hub with various widgets and apps instead of the previous ribbon of tiles on the older models. You'll notice here that it's pretty responsive and easy to use. You can also airplay or quick cast content from your mobile or other devices onto the LG C1. Just make sure your device and TV are connected to the same internet or Wi-Fi and you'll be good to go. Here is the App Store or App Page where you can download and update the apps of your choosing. You got a great selection of apps here. The apps run smoothly and you can view HDR content out of apps like Netflix or YouTube as a couple of examples. Like most TV manufacturers today, you can expect ads and suggested content pushed to the home page. We were not able to opt out, and there's even a dedicated shop page for the advertised content. This here is the Magic Remote, refreshed and redesigned. We still get the awesome motion control pointer feature and the nifty scroll wheel. This makes navigating apps and menus as simple as pointing and clicking. You'll see here that the remote now has a bit more app shortcuts built in. We have the voice command feature as well, and we can use it to change inputs, open apps, perform searches within apps, but some settings can't be changed with the voice command. Let's see how responsive it is. Open YouTube. Cool, now that we've gone through the interface, let's look at the initial setup we recommend. The very first thing we recommend to do is disable the power saving mode and the automatic image modes. We do this because we don't want the TV to adjust the image and brightness automatically while we're viewing content. Sometimes these features can be distracting to our viewing experience and can alter some of the finer details of the content we're watching. So what we'll be turning off is energy saving, AI service, and motion eye care, which is found in the picture menu. You'll also want to ensure your device is properly connected to the HDMI port for that device. The LG C1's HDMI ports are all HDMI 2.1 compatible, which is an awesome thing to see here. HDMI 2.1 significantly increases the HDMI's maximum bandwidth up to 48 gigabits per second with devices that can support it, like the Xbox Series X and the PS5, and some newer graphics cards as well. Do take note, in our testing, the HDMI 2.1 ports did not support the full 48 gigabits per second, but it shouldn't be an issue for a great majority of people. So now let's jump into the picture settings and adjust for SDR content. You'll notice that there are nine picture settings found in the menu. What we recommend is expert dark space slash night picture mode, as this is the most accurate out of the box and allows for the most customization. If you're watching in a brighter room, you can use expert bright space slash daytime as this would be the most accurate in that situation. 
When we say the most accurate, we're referring to the target color temperature of 6500 Kelvin, which most content is mastered at, along with the gamma closest to 2.2 and the lowest white balance delta and color space delta possible. If you wish to learn more about these criteria, you can check our learn article found here. What we'll do now is move over to the brightness tab and make some adjustments there as well. We'll set the contrast to 85, peak brightness to high, we leave auto dynamic contrast disabled, but you can try it out and see if it's something you like. In the color tab, we keep the color depth to 50 and tint at zero. Color gamut, we set to auto detect, allowing the C1 to choose the proper color gamut based on the content being displayed. We set the gamma to 2.2 because that's the target gamma we're looking for. The gamma setting affects the relationship between dark and bright areas. A more neutral value is that of 2.2, which again, we're aiming for. Setting the gamma to lower values can create an overall brighter image. You can try it out for yourself. If we increase it above 2.2, we'll notice a darker overall image. Lastly, in the clarity tab, we leave sharpness at zero. The majority of our tests are conducted with super resolution, noise reduction, and smooth gradation disabled, but you can go ahead and adjust these to your liking as well. Here's a quick breakdown on what each of these options are. Super resolution adjusts the screen's resolution to make dimmer or blurry images more clear. Noise reduction is a feature where the LG C1 processing tries to find imperfections in the content you're watching and auto adjusts to fill or smooth out the scenes. Smooth gradation is a setting that increases processing on gradations. You might be asking, well, Adam, what is gradation? Basically what it is, is how finely levels of color can be displayed when viewing content and how the colors gradually change from one to the next. It matters most when you're looking at details in shadows, the sky, or in skin tones, and tends to matter most in HDR content. Smooth gradation, as it entails, tries to smooth out and gets rid of visible lines. Since there's some processing going on here, a lot of movement or too much info on the screen can cause it to create small artifacts and issues in color. So do keep this in mind when enabling it. Try it out and see if you like it. If you're looking to increase the TV's luminosity, you can change the OLED pixel brightness setting and adjust it depending on the viewing environment you're in. This won't affect or impact the overall picture quality. You can also increase the screen brightness setting as this actually adjusts the image brightness and not the luminosity. We tend to leave this setting at 50, but you can try it at different levels and see what works best for you. Let's take a look at HDR now and our recommendations for this type of content. HDR is automatically enabled through native apps like Prime Video and Netflix. When you play the HDR content, you'll notice the settings on your C1 will automatically change, including the OLED pixel brightness feature. The TV does a great job at deciding what settings to use, so we suggest leaving the settings as they are in their default mode. If you wish to get HDR content to work from external devices like a gaming console or a Blu-ray player, you'll want to enable HDMI deep color within the HDMI settings menu for the input that the device is connected to. We recommend using this setting only on devices that are compatible or require it to avoid compatibility issues. You might notice with HDR content that the screen brightness may change. You can try out the auto dynamic contrast or dynamic tone mapping, which can tend to help produce a brighter image. We know how a lot of you look to brightness as an important factor when viewing content. So try these settings out and see how it fares. The C1 also supports Dolby Vision, which is a rendition of HDR content. Like in other HDR formats, the settings will automatically change when you start watching Dolby Vision content. You can leave the settings as they are, and we recommend using either cinema picture mode or the new filmmaker mode. If the TV defaults to filmmaker mode, this means that you're watching the content the way that the filmmaker intended. If you're looking to customize your viewing experience even further, you can enable some of the motion settings found deeper in the picture settings menu. Do take note that we disable most of the motion enhancing functions for the majority of our tests, but you can play around with these settings and see what works best for you. Motion interpolation or true motion here on the C1 needs to be set to user selection and adjust the de-blur and de-judder the way you see fit. What this does is helps mitigate against stutter, not to be confused with judder. Stutter is a result of low frame rate, but consistent frame timing. Many OLEDs do tend to suffer in this area because of the TV's fast response time. You'll notice low frame rate content can appear to stutter due to the frame being held for longer on screen. Use only the de-blur and the de-judder sliders if you want to only apply motion interpolation to low frame rate content, like movies 
and adjust these to your liking. Some people will like to turn them up to the max for the smoothest image, giving you that soap opera effect. But if you find there are too many artifacts being introduced, and if it starts becoming distracting to you, then you can go ahead and reduce these sliders or turn motion interpolation off completely. If you want to know more about motion interpolation, check out this video here. You'll notice another option in the settings menu called OLED Motion Pro. What this does is enable the TV's black frame insertion, or BFI. BFI does exactly what its name entails. It inserts black frames into content at regular intervals, usually matched to the frame rate of the content you're watching. If you set it to high, it will activate BFI at 60 Hz, which darkens the screen and can be distracting to some people due to the added flicker. This feature, when set to high, can also cause judder or stutter when viewing 24p content, so we suggest setting it to medium or low, which adjusts the refresh rate to 120Hz instead, making for a less intrusive viewing experience. If you do set the BFI to flicker at 120Hz for 60Hz content, you may start to notice image duplication, so do be careful for that and adjust accordingly. Speaking about judder, there is an option on the C1's Clarity tab within the Advanced Picture Setting menu called Cinema Screen. This will help mitigate any kind of judder you may encounter, but do take note that while OLED Motion Pro is set to high, there will still be judder with content at 24p. What judder looks like is slight stutters that you may notice in scenes where the camera is panning. It's basically a mismatch between the refresh rate of the TV's panel and the frequency of the 24p video. We don't think judder will be much of an issue here on the LG C1 especially with this feature enabled. By the way, before we speak about settings for sports, if you enjoy our content, please make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest videos and check out our website for the full review and more. By subscribing, you're helping us reach a wider audience and in turn, helping us help you find the best products for your needs. Settings for sports is pretty straightforward. We recommend applying our SDR or HDR settings depending on the content you're watching. If you've ever ran into the problem where you're watching a sport and you just can't seem to keep up with the ball or puck on screen because the scene becomes too fuzzy or blurry, well, we can adjust the previously mentioned BFI feature to help smooth out the blur. This will cause the overall content you're watching to be a bit darker, so use this feature only if necessary. We also don't suggest using any interpolation while watching sports, as this can increase the amount of flicker you see on the screen. This can also make small objects disappear or players to have blur surrounding their figure. For TV shows, you'll want to follow the same recommendations for movies. I know I sound like a broken record, but again, feel free to play around with these settings depending on the content you're watching and see if you prefer a brighter image or some interpolation to smooth out some movement. It's a personal preference and you might enjoy the classic soap opera look and feel to your content. Play around with it and make it your own once again. The optimal gaming settings are pretty straightforward. LG did make it much easier to change up your gaming settings, as you'll see. What we recommend is mimicking the settings from HDR and SDR content and make sure to enable the new Game Optimizer option in the General Settings tab. This will allow low latency mode, allowing for a great gaming experience. If you were able to get a hold of the Xbox One or PS5, you'll be able to take full advantage of HDR gaming with content at 4K 120Hz. You'll notice that the C1 automatically enables all the game-related settings and should switch over to Game Optimizer Picture Mode when you choose the input your console's connected to. You'll also want to enable HDMI Deep Color on the console's input port to maximize your gaming experience. Check and be sure that instant game response is enabled so that the TV can automatically enable the game optimizer features for you. The game optimizer also has an option called game genre, which includes four presets. These presets will automatically adjust black stabilizer and white stabilizer to suit the type of game you're playing. You can see here there's an FPS or first person shooter mode, which allows you to see more details in shadowy or dark areas. LG added another neat feature here called Prevent Input Delay, which reduces input lag even further. Setting it to boost can reduce the input lag by about 3 milliseconds, but is only effective at 60 Hz. You can see the input lag chart right here, where you'll see native 4K at 120 Hz, giving us about 5.3 milliseconds, which is really nice. 
As a gaming TV, you'll be pretty satisfied with the C1. You can check out our review for more detailed results by clicking the link below. We did notice during our testing that Dolby Vision doesn't seem to work when AMD FreeSync Premium was enabled, so do keep this in mind. It does work though with HDMI Forum VRR, and do take note, it is NVIDIA certified G-Sync compatible. For PC gaming and or monitor use, with proper 444 chroma subsampling support, you're going to really want to put the icon to PC for the HDMI port your PC is connected to. You'll then want to apply our SDR or HDR settings as the picture mode changes after putting the icon to PC. Again, you may need to enable HDMI deep color to maximize your viewing experience. Do take note that during our testing, we were not able to turn on BFI when in PC mode. Now onto some extra features for you guys. We know all too well that when it comes to OLEDs, the potential risk of burn-in is always on our minds. As with most OLED TVs these days, the LG C1 comes with an extra feature called OLED Screen Saver. We don't expect burn-in to be an issue for most people, but depending on how you use your OLED, there is a chance of it maybe happening. The Screen Move setting will help mitigate OLED burn-in. As it entails, the entire image will be moved a few pixels to one side and gradually shifts it in a different direction over time. This can help reduce the effects of burn-in from very small elements like fine lines in game HUDs or icons on a desktop. We do recommend you leave this feature enabled since the screen shift is not very noticeable unless you're using it as a PC monitor. Another cool feature that LG has implemented to help preserve your precious OLED panel is the Adjust Logo Brightness option. This automatically dims the area around a logo when the TV detects one on screen. Do take note that if this feature is enabled when gaming, it could negatively affect your gaming experience if the TV detects a UI element as a logo and dims that area. For this reason, we suggest putting it to low setting. Here we see another pixel saving feature called pixel cleaning. What this does is it runs a pixel refresh cycle taking about an hour to complete. You can set it to auto mode so that after every four consecutive hours of cumulative usage, it will run a short pixel refresh cycle while the TV is turned off. You can also manually run it if you prefer doing spot refreshes. Alrighty then, so what do you think of these settings? Have you tried them? Let us know what settings work best for you in the comments below. Also, we're a growing company and are expanding into other product categories. As a result, we're currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So, if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at our careers page on our website. You can check out all the measurements and settings along with our full reviews at ratings.com. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. You can also become an insider on the website for early access to our latest results. If you're interested in reading the full review, please check out our website here. If you'd like to watch our YouTube video for the LG C1 TV review, you can check it out right here. So that's it. Thank you for watching and see you next time.